Looking at Spy Family, you'd think it's just an adorable slice of life adventure series full of colorful characters, family bonds, and comedy. But if you look into the manga creator's past, you might find that the origins of this family friendly series aren't as wholesome as you might think. Welcome anime friends, my name is Phoenix and before we dive into the wicked twisted world of Endo's works before Spy Family, make sure that you grab your cup because it's time to spill the anime tea. We're going to dive into the world of Spy Family before it existed. We need to know a little bit more about its creator, Tatsuya Endo. Tatsuya Endo started his career by working as an assistant on series like Blue Exorcist and Fire Punch, as well as creating his own one-shots and eventually his own serials. No, not Captain Crunch. We're talking about serialized manga, which is featured in magazines such as Shonen Jump and, and Jump SQ or Jump Square. These initial series were more on the mature side, featuring stories that had dark themes such as witch hunting, ruthless assassins, bounty hunters, criminals, and more. Endo gravitated towards grittier stories, still full of comedy, but often that took some unexpected dark turns. It was Endo Sensei's longtime editor, Shihei Lin, who suggested to Endo to combine multiple wholesome aspects of what made his works great into a series that they would pitch to Shonen Jump Plus. That series was Spy Family, and the Shonen Jump Plus editorial team loved it at first sight. It eventually went on to become one of the most popular manga of the past decade and win several awards as well as sell millions of copies worldwide. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. This video is about Tatsuya Endo's previous works and origins before Spy Family, after all. So let's dive into that crazy, demented, unhinged world before Spy Family's wholesomeness blessed us in our manga and television screens. Endo Sensei's earliest works date all the way back to the early 2000s with some one-shot titles featuring Seibu Yuji, which is about a school of bounty hunters, Geka Bijin, which is a retelling of the story of Princess Kaguya, and which later becomes serialized, Witch Craze, that's about witch hunters with bloodthirsty swords, PMG Zero, which is a story about police and criminals, and Tista, which is the first one we're going to be talking about. This is not because I don't want to cover those other stories, I actually really do, but unfortunately I can't find them to read them and be able to retell them to you. So we're going to be diving into Tista because I was actually able to read it and I can break down the kind of unhinged world that eventually inspired parts of Spy Family. Tissa is a serialized manga that ran from 2007 to 2008. It is Endo's first serialized manga, and it is arguably one of his darkest. The story follows a young assassin whose name is Tista, who also goes by the name of Sister Militia, who during the day is just a shy student, but at night is a ruthless sniper assassin. One day, as she is running late to school, she almost gets hit by a car, but gets saved by a boy in her class and starts to make a real-life friend. Unfortunately, she finds out that the boy might be involved with the person that she is sent to assassinate, and she has to determine what to do, if she should continue with her job or if she should make a friend. It definitely falls into the subgenre of assassin teenage girls. Think of stories like Kite, which was a completely, which is a completely unhinged OVA series. You can also tell from this work that Endo has an obsession with Western media and history, since this story took place in New York City and also follows the mafia and the dark underworld of the church. But there are still hints of comedy within the series that Endo tries to incorporate. I mean, one of the characters' names is literally Artie Drawer. You can guess what his occupation is, but I'm sure that his he was named that purely for comedic effect. Despite the interesting plot though, it is an early work and therefore it is not one of Endo's best works. It has a very fast paced, kind of messy, dialogue heavy first few chapters that make it hard to want to stick with. The most important thing that we need to know from the series is that it eventually went on to influence a really popular character in Spy Family that we all know and love, which is Yor's character. As I said before, the story of Tista follows a young girl who is a student by day and an assassin at night, and Yor has a similar story set up. The main difference between the two is that Tista snipes people where Yor prefers to stab, but other than that, they have similar personalities and a similar story. 
Gekka Beijing, also known as Moonflower Beauty or Moonflower Princess, is another serialized manga that came after Tista. It ran from 2010 until 2012 and is the predecessor to a one-shot that Endo created back in the early 2000s. The story follows a girl named Kaguya, who is the predecessor of the throne of the Flower Moon Priestess and is a bit naive and spoiled. Having to live up to her mother's legacy has left her with a load of work and very little of her mother's attention, which she often tries to get. It's a sci-fi retelling of a popular folk tale known as the Tale of Princess Kaguya, where an elderly couple finds the moon princess in a bamboo stalk. The story moves away from Endo's kind of obsession with Western influences in history and back into Japan's own culture with the Tale of Princess Kaguya, and also kind of looking to the future with a kind of sci-fi retelling with people who live on the moon and this whole bloodline royalty story. Much like Spy Family, the young girl Kaguya starts off naive and is also the main comedy for the series. There's a lot more comedy in the series, especially in the beginning, but it does divulge into more darker, grittier storytelling as time goes on. As Kaguya grows from this naive young girl into the person who is meant to take on and inherit the title of Moonflower Priestess. So more of a coming of age story rather than a comedy. What I found the most interesting about the story is that it really dives into the relationship between Kaguya and her mother and probably is one of the earliest references to what eventually becomes Spy Family where Endo likes to show the relationships between guardians and children. Kaguya's relationship with her mother and her wanting her attention and just wanting to be a kid is really kind of sad and heartwarming and heart aching. You see that Kaguya's mother kind of pushes her away in order to try to make her a stronger person. Now let's dive into yet another darker work that Tatsuya Endo made, probably one of my favorite of his series, and it is called Renkoku no Ash, also known as Ash of Purgatory. It is a one-shot that was created back in 2014. The story follows a knight named Bell who works for the church and is protecting a pilgrimage when he stumbles upon a girl being attacked in the city. He saves a girl whose name is Ash, and she repays him by healing his wound. He discovers that she's nice despite her expressionless and cold demeanor, but the church determines that she is a witch and ends up burning her alive. Speaking out against this, Belle is exiled and loses his job, and spends his days trying to figure out why Ash was considered a witch and what secret powers that she once had. It is a really good story with an incredible plot twist. However, we're talking about the unhinged, dark, twisted world of Endo's works, and this one definitely has all of those aspects. There's a couple moments of comedy and lightheartedness, but it falls into something really sad and messed up pretty quickly. Endo took some influences from Ryonosuke Kutagawa, who is an infamous short story writer in Taisho era Japan, who's known for taking Western influences and rewriting them into his own work. As you can tell, Endo does with a lot of his works, where he takes a lot of like European specifically influences and puts it into his work. In Rengoku no Ash, there is a reference to this kind of medieval time where witches were persecuted by being burned alive inside of these giant iron maidens. The craziest part about Rengoku no Ash is that Ash's entire character design was repurposed for Anya's character design. This is insane because Ash's character is totally different from Anya's, her personality and her powers and the time period that she's living in and everything that happens to her is much darker than anything that we've seen so far in Spy Family in the anime or manga. Even though they have different personalities, I love the reference to the double witch hats, which are the hair adornments in both of their hair, that it both references their connection to their witch-like powers. Even part of Ash's name was used in Anya's name. It was mixed with another character, which we'll be talking about soon, to create her name. And Ash's earrings, which are these like kind of pendant drop earrings, were reused for Yor's character. This next story is a bit more heartfelt and definitely follows the dynamic of Spy Family with a kind of messed up, twisted backstory. It is called Ishi no Usubeni Tatsu ni Hoshi, a pink heart inside stone, a shining star inside steel. It's another one shot that was created in 2017. It follows the story of a man named Captain Gath Negrit who is immune to the effects of most mythical creatures that he sent to battle. 
due to the experiments that his father did on him as a kid, where he exposed him to mythical creatures and their different poisons and abilities. One day he stumbles upon a really powerful Medusa child who's able to turn mostly everything around her into stone, except for him because of his immunity. He finds out that a Medusa slept with a human in order to create this child who was super potent because unfortunately the human that Medusa slept with was ugly and it made her power it made the child's powers really strong. So Gath decides to take it upon himself to try to fix the young Medusa's powers in order for her to live a more normal life. And it actually turns out pretty heartwarming, despite, you know, the whole Medusa turn to stone and the fact that they call the child ugly. That I don't know why that just hurts my heart. <laughs> like this poor this poor child. Despite the wholesome family dynamic of like found family and this man taking in this young girl to try to help her live a better life. There are some darker, gorier parts. Like there's a part where a finger gets ripped off and it's pretty gruesome. There's a brothel scene. There's a character who works at a, at a brothel and all kinds of more mature themes. But honestly, at its core, it's full of a group of adorable, lovable misfits, just in a much shorter package than we're used to seeing. Part of Anya's name is mixed with Ash from the Goku no Ash and Misha from this story. Also, Misha's character design is mixed with uh, Ash's character design to create Anya's. They both have pink hair, but Misha is a much younger character like Anya, and they have these similar kind of like little curls. Of course, Misha's hair is full of snakes though, because she's a Medusa child, so there's that. Can't talk about Endo's one-shots without mentioning the most recent one-shot, which is the most popular influence for Spy Family, which is a short called I Spy. It was created back in 2018, and it follows the story of Japan's most elusive spy who gets caught by a normal high school girl. It's really short, it's full of comedy from the beginning, and it follows more of a basing that we're used to seeing in Spy Family. Spy A4, who is the Japanese spy in I Spy, is basically Twilight character. He can change faces, he's really elusive, and he takes his job way too seriously. The darker aspects of I Spy are not really that dark. <laughs> it just takes a slightly more mature approach because in the first few pages, the main character is seen sleeping with another person in order to get information, which is something we probably would never see in, that, in Spy Family. <laughs> Though there is a similar kind of storyline in Spy Family where Twilight is dating one of the daughters of a, a like crime syndicate person. On top of that, there is a more modern take in I Spy because it's based in like modern day Japan. So we have this high school girl and we have modern technology like cameras and computers and things like that. Whereas in Spy Family, it's more Cold War era. Going back towards the like European uh, Western influences and time and era of spies. Throughout Endo's career, there's been a lot of influence from darker, grittier themes, but generally over time, they've gotten lighter and lighter to create Spy Family. Now, there is a possibility that there are some darker themes that haven't been expressed yet in the show or in the manga. Um, we are getting little glimpses of that now with Twilight's backstory, but who knows how dark or deep Endo will go. Uh, I don't know if they'll ever go back to like the days of Tisto where it just gets really twisted. Spy Family is a perfect balance of all these themes that Endo has been creating and working on for the past two decades. It's a reminder of two very important things. One, not everything you create has to be amazing and it takes time for a creator to build up a repertoire of work that eventually turns into something worthwhile. And two, editors can be very important. Shaylin and Tatsuya Endo's case, I really think that they worked together well and were able to create a really popular, funny, lighthearted series that just melts everyone's hearts and has everyone loving the adorable, peanut-loving Anya. According to Lin himself, he said, I remember banning Endo from drawing anything dark. Endo Sensei agreed to this and I was, hap and I was happy to see him draw the series with much enthusiasm. I would love to share all of the series that I talked about in this video because a lot of them, despite being a little funky and uh, a lot dark, pretty entertaining to read. However, none of them are localized, which sucks. So if you do find them on the internet somewhere, I won't link them, and you want to find a way to support the creator, I highly suggest either 
finding a spy family copy which are mostly sold out right now because of the anime or just reading the manga on the Shonen Jump Plus app, Viz Media app, Manga Plus app, wherever. It's only $2 a month for the Shonen Jump Plus app so I highly recommend that or just watching the anime legally and just showing support for the series. As I said earlier, my name is Phoenix and I dive into the world of visual storytelling in anime and sometimes manga on a weekly basis. If you want more information about Spy Family, I made a whole other video which you can find somewhere up here where I break down the fashion influences behind the series. Check that out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!